morning, race fans. Welcome to Sunday here at the Grand Prix of St. Petersburg. My name is Rob Howden, the voice of this USF Pro Championships presented by Cooper Tires. We're getting set right now for the second race for the drivers in USF 2000. They'll be rolling out uh, uh, in a couple of minutes here, getting ready to go for their second race of the doubleheader, as I had said. A driver no stranger to this USF 2000 car, no stranger to the podium. He was on the podium yesterday in USF Pro 2000. Kiko Porto, champion a couple of years ago in USF 2000. Let's start by talking about your race yesterday. You were chasing Christian Brooks like crazy, but a good run for you. You didn't get the win, but crucial points to start the season. Definitely. Um, I started P3 yesterday, and I found a way to, to go to P2 in the first corner. Uh, but then, like, I really found the pace of the car. The car was massive fast. But here in St. Petersburg, we have a, a street course, so it's yeah. difficult to pass. And with um, the aero wash that the, the USF Pro cars have, it's, it's really difficult to pass, so I try to manage P2, good points. Uh, we have a really, really long way uh, ahead of us this this, this season. So four corner points, uh, today we have one more race, starting P2. So let's see what, what we can be. Kiko's gonna race after this afternoon's NTT IndyCar Series Grand Prix of St. Petersburg main event. But you have three teammates, not with you on this side, but the other side of the trailer in USF 2000. You've been a champion there before. You've won there before. Some of these drivers coming in here you know, on their second race ever in this program. What can you do with them, sitting down talking to them about your experiences running USF 2000? So like I won before here, my first race on, on the Indy program uh, was here uh, in St. Petersburg 2020. So I have some experience with the USF car. Um, I try to have like as a driver coach and also some tips. I know like there's guys coming maybe from F4 and, and their own countries and we have some strategy here during the race that we need to pay attention like tire management and, and how aggressive you need to be in the first lap but also you need to back it up a little bit during the, the middle part of the race. So this kind of tips, I, I try to help the guys max as possible. Like if I'm not in my engineering room, yeah. I'm with them to, to help them. So it's good. It's good to be part of this. Here's an interesting question for you. They, of course, raced yesterday afternoon. So they raced in the afternoon. Now they're running in the morning here. We're talking about younger drivers, right? Guys, you know, 15, 16, 17 years of age. Is it different running in the morning than running in the afternoon? You, know, you spend the day kind of relaxing. In the morning, you're right up out of the hotel. You get to the racetrack. Are, are you a little, are you a little weary in the morning? You gotta wake up a bit, a little bit of espresso, maybe. Definitely, but more than this, like normally in the morning, we have more grip. So okay. if you have the mentality, the same grip of the afternoon, you're probably like under driving a bit. Okay. So you need to push the car, feel the limit. Uh, but the guy that feel that limit earlier on the race is the one that can get this advantage. So this is very important. There's the line right there. The guy that feels the limit feels very important for all these drivers, especially those in USF 2000. Again, well, we're looking forward to watching Kiko start from the outside of the front row later on today. But after these messages, folks, we're going to come back and show you the grid for the second race of the USF 2000 doubleheader. It's your Uncle Cooper. Your SUV is a multi-purpose tool, like a corkscrew fish scaler. And that means your tires should be multi-purpose too. Like these Cooper rugged treks. They're tough, but also run smooth as butter. And with dual sidewalls, it's like having a multi-tool that can look like a completely different multi-tool. Don't take that idea, by the way. I'm gonna patent it. Go with the Coopers. Cooper! your uncle cooper sure once in a blue moon you might need your tires for hauling a horse in a hailstorm but most days you're gonna need your tires for tougher things like teaching your sister's kid how to parallel park <sighs> thankfully these cooper and door maxes aren't just tough they're everyday tough okay there's a lot of improvement go with the coopers cooper
it's your Uncle Cooper. If you and your truck are constantly tackling the regular duties of the day, go with a tire that can handle them all. Oh man, I stepped in it. Go with the Coopers. It is yet another Chamber of Commerce day here in St. Petersburg, Florida, as we get set to kick things off here trackside with our second event in the USF 2000 category presented by Cooper Tires, all part of the USF Pro Championships, the series rebranded over the offseason, formerly known as the Road to Indy. And we are excited to get back out of here. Our young driver is ready to take to this track and tackle it once again after some tremendous racing yesterday. My name is Rob Howden, folks, joining in the booth by the voice of the event, Todd Lewis. Todd, awesome to be here. Another gorgeous morning. A little bit of humidity, super warm, 73 degrees. Absolutely perfect for a day of racing. A real challenge for these drivers and teams as well. They wrapped up the program here on Saturday. And then it was gather yourself up, get back to your paddock area, assess where you are and then prepare to turn around and come back quickly this morning. So it's, it's for uh, drivers, I imagine, a bit of try to find a little time to decompress, let the adrenaline come down, focus on what went well, where you may want to improve during today's race, and then get refocused to get set to take that green in just a few minutes. You know, and even for the youngest drivers, it may be better for them because they obviously raced yesterday afternoon, the final race of the, uh, of the, the day before, right before MX5 Cup, and be able to turn it right back around. It's not like they're sitting around all day today like our drivers in, in USF Pro 2000 are. They're going to have to wait till the end of the day before they get back at it. Young drivers diving right back in. Uh, we have the cars working their way now out of the paddock area onto pit lane. The tuggers come first. All the crews will roll down to get themselves set up. Let's have a look at the grid while they prepare themselves to fire things up. We have 21 drivers set to go here this day in USF 2000 presented by Cooper Tires, the middle rung of our USF Pro Championships right between USF Juniors and USF Pro 2000. 21 drivers, as I said, uh, starting in the 21st position, the rookie driver out of Texas, Avery Towns for exclusive autosport, the number 93. He'll look to work his way forward here. Row number 10 will have uh, Danny Dazelski on the outside for VRD Racing in the number 18 and on the inside, Gordon Scully in the number 19. Roll, uh, moving up to row number nine, Zach Ping. His uh, debut weekend here in the USF 2000 category. Ping for VRD Racing in the number 97, starting 18th. Alongside Al Mori the fourth for J. Howard Driver Development, the Indianapolis, Indiana resident, in the number seven, starting 17th. We'll go to row number eight now, starting on the outside. Maxwell Jamison, one of the drivers who has... Uh, Moving his way up, graduated from our USF Juniors program from last year. Jamison for D-Force Racing in the number 12, starting 16th. And on the inside, Trey Burke in the number 58 out of Texas for Future Star Racing. Burke had a really good run yesterday, was running there in the top five, top six. But on the final lap, the shock cover popping up in front of him. He didn't see, almost went off in turn number one, but still was able to put in a, a pretty solid result. Moving to row number seven on the outside, our reigning USF Juniors champion, Matt Clark, out of Milton, Ontario, Canada. Clark in the D-Force Racing, number one machine with that USF Pro Championships livery on the car, the scholarship car. He'll start 14th alongside uh, the young driver of Cornelius, North Carolina, multi-time winner last year in USF Juniors, Sam Corey for VRD Racing, starting in 13th. Going into row number six now on the outside, Chase Gardner, so impressive yesterday, the young uh, driver out of Texas running for exclusive autosport in the Mindshift Financial number 95. Made an amazing pass on the outside of, of turn number 5 and 6 uh, to get up a couple of spots. He'll start P12 today, so look for Gardner to work his way into the top 10. Alongside him, a driver who started at the very tail of the field. He was able to work his way up forward and got a better lap that moved him up in qualifying. Uh, Elliot Cox in the number 67, a, a radically better starting spot. He'll be P11 on the inside of row number 6 to launch race number 2. We'll go into the top 10 right now, starting on the outside. Jorge Garcias in the number 10 for D-Force Racing. The Mexican starting 10th in the number 10. Alongside him at a Christchurch, New Zealand for exclusive autosport. It's the number 90 of Jacob Douglas. Row number four now, starting on the outside, the future star racing driver, Andre Castro, in the number 56. Only five uh, race weekends in total here uh, in USF 2000. Hoping to put a full program together with future star. There he is there, Andre Castro, ready to get at it, at it uh, to New York, New York. He'll start eighth position on the outside of row number four. Inside of that row, a rookie driver from Canada, Lucas Saint-Jean, for J. Howard Driver Development in the number nine. He'll start in the seventh position. 
We'll move now up to row number three on the outside, Nicholas D. Orlando at a Hartsdale, New York, at the number 92. His brother, of course, Michael D. Orlando, winning USF 2000 last year, running now in the Pro 2000 category. D. Orlando, pretty solid run yesterday, looking for more today. He'll try to challenge for the podium in the number 92, starting from the sixth position. Inside of that row, his teammate, Joey Brienza, uh, for exclusive autosport in the number 91. Brienza out of Colorado, starting P5. We'll see him throughout the entire season this year, his focus on USF Juniors. Moving up to row number two, yesterday's winner, Lockie Hughes, the Australian for J. Howard Driver Development, starting on the outside of row number two. It'll be a P4 starting spot for yesterday's winner. We'll see if he can go back-to-back here on a beautiful Sunday morning. Inside of that row from nearby Gulfport, Florida, just 14 years of age for VRD Racing, the extremely talented Nikita Johnson in the number 17, going to start P3. 21 drivers in the field will put two on the front row off pole. A tremendous run yesterday, his first podium. That's Eva Gors Papasavas running for J. Howard Driver Development. Eva Gors starting on the outside in the number six, but the driver that will lead him away here. Uh, from the pole position. It's been an amazing weekend for uh, Simon Sykes. All the ups and downs of racing came in as one of the outright favorites to win this weekend for Pabst Racing, one of the powerhouses here in USF 2000. Had an issue in uh, practice and qualifying, got hard into the wall and uh, damaged that car aggressively. The team was able to get him back out. He started deep in the field in 15th, drove his way all the way up into the top five, turned a fast lap that allowed him to move to pole position. So a much better opportunity today for Simon Sykes to try to grab his first win in the USF 2000 program. It'll be Sykes and Papa Savas on row one, Johnson and Hughes on row two, Brienza and D. Orlando on row three, row four, St. Jean and Castro, row five, Douglas and Garcias, row six, Cox and Gardner, row seven, Corey and Clark, row number eight, we'll see Trey Burke alongside Maxwell Jameson, Maury and Ping on row nine, Scully and Dazelski on row 10, and Avery Towns on row number 11. We are just about a minute away from getting things fired up here. The drivers have all worked their way out. They're trying to clear out those morning cobwebs, of course, these young guys, as we know. Remember back when you were 14, 15, 16 years of age? You weren't really clear when you woke up in the morning, maybe a little foggy, but these drivers have been doing some exercises. They've got their mind right because they have to go racing for 20 laps around what is obviously a very challenging facility. This track here at St. Petersburg, the Concrete Canyon, as I like to call it, is a tough one for sure. Each of these drivers need to be 100% on their game as they get set to go racing to cap off this USF 2000 doubleheader. Drivers in USF Pro 2000 will be out after the NTT IndyCar Series, so we'll bookend the day with the USF Pro Championships. And, folks, we are about set to go. Joining us down on pit lane to fire things up here and give us the command to start engines from the Anderson Companies, Mr. Frank Skreck. Good morning. On behalf of the Anderson Companies of Anderson Interior Contracting and Corporate Woodworking, we'd like to welcome you all to the Discount Tire Grand Prix of St. Petersburg. And with that, drivers, start your engines. Engines coming to life on pit lane, and Frank mentioned our new program, our new partnership with Discount Tire. They're entitling the, the, uh, the event today, the Grand Prix of St. Petersburg. Discount Tire is the official tire retailer of USF Pro 2000 Championships, presented by Cooper Tires. The company was established in 1960 and today has over 1,100 plus stores across 37 states. Continuing the vision of their founder, Bruce T. Haley, the company has grown uh, from a single storefront to become one of the most trusted tire and wheel retailers in the country. And honoring customer and employee relationships. In addition to its official tire retailer status, Discount Tire will entitle the USF Pro Championships Scholarship Program. We'll talk a lot about that throughout the, the day here. The Discount Tire Driver Advancement Scholarship, which will continue to provide an unprecedented scholarship funded path up the motorsports ladder with over $3.1 million in prize money and awards on offer for the champions this year, 2023, in USF Pro 2000, USF 2000, and USF Juniors. All those drivers getting a chance to take their next step, Todd, thanks to uh, this scholarship program. And of course, great to have Discount Tire on board as well. You mentioned uh, the champion from the USF Juniors. That is the first stepping stone in the ladder system of the USF tra- Championships. Matt Clark, the champion wearing the number one and showing the colors of the USF Pro Championships. And he'll start deep in the field today. We'll see how he can fare. I'm also kind of curious to see how Dandy Dazelski and Avery Towns also fare coming from the back of the pack. They had troubles yesterday, and I wonder if, if it's better to have the quick turnaround as we talked about finishing up almost at the end of the day yesterday go back 
uh, debrief with the rest of the team, make whatever adjustments and repairs yeah. are necessary, and then right back at it first thing this morning. Yeah, Avery Towns had some trouble. He and Zach Ping got into it over in turn number four. That brought out that early yellow. And I know, yeah, Avery, Avery Towns, yeah, yeah, young guy who just came out of the SCCA Formula X category to jump in here in the USF Pro Championships. He simply wants to get out and get a full race in, uh, under his belt. That's the one thing he was looking for. Kind of got robbed of that yesterday with the incident. Ping, uh, Towns, Dazelski, the drivers further back, looking to get a really good run in here. There's the pace car working its way up here as we get set to go. Simon Sykes will start on the pole in the number 22 machine. Eva Gors Papasavas on the outside. His first front row start as well. Get ready to go, ladies and gentlemen. The field kind of working their way through. A little bit disjointed. You see a lot of them still trying to catch back up. See whether or not we go green. We only have half the field up front. We'll see. Yeah, a lot of the field trying to catch back up right now. Yep, yellow flag. We are not going green. No green at all. Yellow, yellow, yellow. I was going to say, a lot of the field not caught back up at this point here. One driver actually coming into pit lane. That's, I think one of the future star drivers is coming into pit lane here. Like this could be an issue. But indeed, the field was not fully packed up like it should have been. That looks to me like that may be the number 56 of Trey Burke, I think, coming into pit lane here right now. Yeah, no, that's the 56 of Andre Castro. Castro was supposed to start in the eighth position, but he'll bring that car into pit lane. They had a little bit of an issue with Andre Castro's machine yesterday, and the team worked hard on it through the night. Obviously, you don't get a chance to have any kind of hardship laps, get out, get out on track, kind of making sure everything's fine. No practice, of course, this morning either to, to, to maybe you know find out if there's any extra issues still, but uh, tough one there for Andre Castro. Hopefully, they'll be able to get that thing uh, figure it out and get him back on the racetrack. But nonetheless, Todd didn't get a chance to get the start. The field just wasn't set up. As, as you want, uh, for Andre Castro, you want as many laps as possible. So, yes, even if he does have to start tail end, just to get him out and get a full yeah. race in will will be helpful. We saw this yesterday in the Indy Pro 2000 series as well. The field got a little bit strung out, and they waved off the first attempt at the start. Uh, everyone Maybe. will be getting further instructions via the radio to get bunched up a little sooner and a little earlier, and we can see that happening as the field is heading towards corner number 10 now. They're already starting to double up in two by two. Yeah, tough one for Castro, as I said. Finished ninth yesterday, but was, ru was running as high as, I think, fourth or fifth at one point. Hopefully, they'll get him back out on the track once they head through here. But, yeah, field looks a lot better this time. We got them all dialed in and ready to go. Eight o'clock in the morning here in St. Petersburg. And these drivers, these young pilots here in this USF 2000 category, about ready to wrap up their event here right now as we get set to go for the discount tire grand prix of st petersburg a 20 lapper with simon sykes on the pole looking good as they work their way out onto the front straightaway they get it down to pace car speed to look at aaron likens in the flag stand as we get set to go racing green 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 and a pretty good start there for simon sykes as he gets the jump nikita johnson looking good as well always tough going into turn number one it's wide coming into that corner. Driver's doing a good job. No one making that big dive bomb move to the bottom. Nicely done for our USF 2000 drivers. One driver has lost a wing. That is for sure. Someone clipping. There's a wing to the outside of turn number one there. We'll see who it is coming through. Someone's lost the front wing off that car right there. A little further back. One of the, maybe one of the J. Howard driver development cars is without a wing. No, that's a black. We'll try to pick that car up further in the field, but ever, otherwise everybody clean and attacking of turn number five, six, and now over to seven through eight and nine. You'll see them single file up coming through the eight, nine complex. And Todd, that's the big rundown out of there to turn number 10. That's a nice job by everyone to get single file and get through that back part of the course, the rhythm part where you're going left, right, left, right, and now streaming down towards that says left, uh, the left-hander in turn number 10. So indeed, drivers settling in to get things underway. Opening lap looking pretty good so far. Looks like we may have had a driver off in turn number 10. Could have overcooked that corner. We'll try to pick that up for you. Getting, yeah, getting reports that maybe one driver has gone off in turn number 10. Down to the bottom. There's a big lock up further back. Driver in P4 right now. That's St. Jean. Lucas St. Jean, the Canadian, locking it up, coming down. Oh, there's contact there. That was a... Deep move to the inside. 
That was the number 97 overcooking it big time. Zach Ping went down the inside of turn number one, locked it up and drove right into the side of the car there. That's some of the things we see in, in this uh, USF 2000 category. These young drivers overcooking it. There's damage potential in the front of that. That's the driver who lost the wing there as well. So we'll have a look if we can see, maybe get a replay of that as they came through. That was uh, Zach Ping, as we said. There's some more damage there. Number of drivers with damage on their cars here early. So here's the replay right now. Watch, there's a lock up there. But looking further back, you're going to see Zach Ping look to the inside, try to make a move to the bottom, throw it in here, and just lock it up over the paint and drive right into the side of the number 14 of Sam Corey. So that's his teammate. He actually drove into the side of his teammate, the VRD teammate, Sam Corey. Sam's the one that lost the front wing as well. So the Cornelius, North Carolina driver, not having a good run today. Yesterday, Sam Corey finishing P5, a pretty good debut for the young driver who came through USF Juniors, but not so good today. That's going to be an interesting team debrief after this race, but that that is the tantalizing part about corner number one is that it is so wide, and it looks like there is an opportunity to go up the inside to try to take advantage Advantage and maybe gain a position or two, especially for Zach Ping, who wound up starting deep in the field today because of some issues yesterday. But as you saw, as soon as Zach tried to slow down, he's on that paint from the airport runway, and it is an extremely slippery surface. Even with all the rubber that's gone down already, it is very challenging trying to get that car slowed up to make that harder right turn if you're on the inside. And the one thing we didn't mention, obviously, our first race of the day, the track has not been cleaned off yet. There's a lot of wind here. A lot of dust gets, a lot of, uh, of, of sand gets blown onto the racetrack. The grip level is quite a bit lower at the very start of the day. Once we get things dialed in, we get a bunch of laps, and it's going to get a lot more grip. But otherwise... Uh, it does. It is pretty. It is pretty slippery. We do have Nikita Johnson up front. Let's just throw it back to that. The local driver from Gulfport has gone to P1. Nikita Johnson, just 14 years of age, P1 right now. As he was able to get by Simon Sykes, who now runs in second. Ivagoras Papasabas in the, in the uh, second spot. Lucas Saint Jean runs in uh, fourth. Make that lucky Hughes up to fourth. With Papasabas in third, Hughes fourth, Saint Jean fifth. And that is Jay Howard driver development in third, fourth, and fifth. Joey Brienz has worked his way up into sixth spot. Jorge Garcias runs seventh. Elliot Cox in eighth. Trey Burke ninth. Matt Clark in tenth. And uh, Al Mori the fourth just on the outside. 11th right now in his debut weekend. Good run for Al Mori. That's a lot of action and a lot of shuffling <laughs> of positions in the first four laps here in the streets of St. Petersburg. Nikita Johnson, who looked like he might be on his way to a runner-up finish yesterday, but had a little issue late, was was passed by Eva Goris Papasavas, and uh, looks like we might have somebody else who's uh, yeah. lost a wing out there. Somebody's lost a wing out there. I'm not sure who it was. We'll try to pick it up. One of the things I talked about yesterday is the fact that these cars... They're not overly aero dependent. More mechanical grip than aero grip. So you see the driver's able to hold on. That, I think, might be Jacob Douglas, who may have lost the front wing there. Got a little too close up front. Jacob Douglas, potentially. Here's another driver further back, Chase uh, Gardner, going back a little further. So a bunch of action. Yeah, here's the number 90. Nope, nope. He's still got the wing. Looks like Chase Gardner. Yeah, Gardner, the number 95. And Matt Clark slowing in the number one. There are a lot of action here right now. Matt Clark slowing in the number one machine. He was running, I want to say, 10th, 9th or 10th position. But it looks like Clark slowing on the racetrack. We'll see whether or not he heads the pit lane. I know a couple of drivers coming in. Indeed, in comes Chase Gardner. That wing is still there, so some driver has lost a wing. The wing is just a skew here for Chase Gardner. They'll have to change that wing out. Not sure what's wrong here with Matt Clark. He's brought his car into pit lane as well, so... Todd, a ton of action here early on. We're only, what, six laps into this race, and it is crazy right now. Let's reset it up front for you. It is Nikita Johnson in that 17 car with about a six-tenths of a second lead on Simon Sykes, who started on the pole. Eva Goris Papasavich currently running third. Lockie Hughes fourth, yesterday's winner. And Lucas St. Jean, who's moved up a couple of spots around about the top five. Indeed, great run for Lucas St. Jean right now, top five. Getting told that Zach Ping was going to get a drive-through penalty for the incident of responsibility that we saw down in turn number one when he got into the side of his teammate Sam Corey so uh, that's instant responsibility for him it'll be a drive through penalty if he's not already served that for Zach Ping they're actually closing back up here as well on Gordon Scully the number 19 he's had some issues the lingers are closing up on him as well so yeah a lot of crazy action here at the start of this USF 2000 race
couple drivers with issues early. A number of drivers into pit lane as well. Here comes uh, that's Lucas Sejan into pit lane, I believe, in the number 90. And here comes Jacob Douglas. He has indeed lost the front wing. So Jacob Douglas losing the front wing as well. So, man, there is, that's Lucas Sejan, too, I believe, out of the top five. What, what is happening here? Maybe we could get the wind back. Everything seems oh, a lot more stable. Another wing. Another wing off. And that was Elliot Cox. He tried to stick his nose under uh, Garcias, Jorge Garcias. Elliot Cox losing a front wing as well. These drivers have to be smart. They got to make sure they're taking care of the cars. When you're losing a front wing like that, it's because you're diving in too low. You're getting to the bottom of the race track. You're trying to have that look. You've got to give yourself enough room. There's the wing gone. And the number 67, Sarah Fisher Hartman, racing development machine for the drive planning sponsored car of Elliot Cox. He's going to have to come to pit lane as well. You're just not going to have that front grip, especially coming through that 10-11 complex. No, twelve. even with these uh, with, with these cars not having a great deal of aero down for missing that front wing is critical. You just simply can't keep up with the rest of the field. Well, you lose the balance, right? If you lost the front and rear wing, you'd still probably be able to put some pretty good lap times down because there's not a lot of aero down for but you lose the front wing. Now everything's on the off the balance. You've got the rear wing, but you don't have the front. So a number of drivers with issues, I think, I want to say Sam Corey's still out there without a front wing, I think. He's just taking advantage of the other drivers who have had issues. So we'll see what happens. Here comes another driver to pit lane as well. This will be the number 97. This will be Zach Ping uh, serving his drive-through penalty for the contact in turn number one with his teammate Sam Corey. So, yeah, it's been a, a little bit of bedlam here uh, at the start here, the first half of this race. 20 laps, I'm being told, confirming a 20-lap race. 20 laps for the drivers here in USF 2000 this afternoon with our USF Pro 2000 we'll go 25 laps or 45 minutes we have a window of time otherwise up front man let's start talking a little bit about Nikita Johnson he's getting challenged aggressively here right now by Simon Sykes but this is your front running four coming down the front straightaway this is good stuff this is Johnson Sykes Papa Sabas and Hughes yesterday's winner Lockie Hughes see if he can get, come back as well Leaders into turn number one. Little lock up there from Papa Sabas. As he's going to try to chase down Simon Sykes. Big run for Simon Sykes yesterday. Uh, Todd started uh, all the way back in 15th. Was able to get himself up to P4. Fast lap of the race, which is a bonus point. Qualifies on the pole. Uh, some money from Cooper Tires as well. $1,000 from Cooper Tires for qualifying on the pole. Again, coming back from that really got to be a heartbreaking uh, incident that he had in qualifying we're getting to the wall and the difficulty with that too is the qualifying session affects both races so yep. his his tremendous run yesterday posting the fast lap getting the bonus point and the bonus money stuck him on the pole for today's race as opposed to again starting deep in the field and have to passing uh, the majority of the field to try to get up front and he's getting a little closer now to Nikita Johnson once again well that's it now right right now Simon Sykes more of a veteran uh, you know multi-time SCCA national champion the runoff winner. He's got a lot of starts in this series. He's never had a full season with a top team here in USF 2000. He's just going to keep putting the pressure on Nikita Johnson. See if he can't force him into a mistake. But interestingly, we capped off our USF Juniors season last year before the final race for USF 2000. We had a couple of drivers come up. Matt Clark, Nikita Johnson, uh, Sam Corey all came to the last USF 2000 race to get their feet wet. So for a guy like Nikita Johnson, it's not his first rodeo maybe his second or third rodeo but for him uh, obviously a home race too the pressure of trying to win here in florida again just by a nearby gulf port that's where i had dinner out last night so that's his hometown he wants to win here in st petersburg that's the great thing about the uh usf championships too is the commonality of the chassis if a driver has the budget and the opportunity later in the season perhaps just if the plan is to move up to usf 2000 next season get in a car for a race or two just to sort of get your feet wet as you mentioned understand the differences and the dynamics to uh, prepare for that next full season indeed doesn't take much to convert one of these cars from USF Juniors up into USF 2000 a little more to go from USF 2000 to USF Pro 2000 it's all the same Caddis carbon fiber tub and halo uh, so the same base car for all the uh, levels of this USF Pro Championship one of the things we're looking forward to next year as well, too, Todd, is the fact that we have a new relationship with the Skip Barber Racing School. Their champion is going to come and run with us next year. Skip Barber Racing School is the official racing school of the USF Pro Championship, and they're inviting drivers to compete for a half a million dollars in prizes, including a $100,000 scholarship, 
for the series champion, Standard USF Juniors, in 2024. Their eight-weekend, six-race series will take place in the most iconic tracks in America with high visibility and pro-race atmosphere. The Skip Barber Formula Car features 160 horsepower, a paddle shift six-speed transmission, and Goodyear Eagle Racing slick tires. You'll have a professional crew, expert instruction, video, and data analysis, hospitality, and more. Sign up today at skipbarber.com. Just past the halfway point now in this USF 2000 race, and it is Nikita Johnson who is out front of Simon Sykes by .3 seconds. Eva Goris Papasavas third, Lockie Hughes yesterday's winner fourth, and Joey Brienza in the 91 car up to fifth. Yeah, Joey Brienza carrying the flag for exclusive on sport. Four drivers in. Yesterday was uh, Nicholas D. Orlando who had such a good run. He was able to work his way up into the sixth spot. But D. Orlando back in 15th right now. Gardner lost a wing. Douglas lost a wing. They're running 15th, 17th, and 18th respectively. And, and same thing with Elliot Cox. He was all the way up into like sixth or seventh position. Man, coming through turn number five there. Just trying to put the nose to the inside. Just doesn't work. Look at the battle stepping up right now. They are going at it big time to try to find a way by Simon Sykes. That is Eva Goris Papasavas. Let's see if he tries it down into turn number four. Sykes is going to go to the bottom of the racetrack. He'll run the inside. Papasavas trying everything he can to get by. Sykes up on the wheel on the Paps racing machine. That Paps car was in a championship battle all last year, as we know, with Miles Rowe and Jace Denmark. Now Simon Sykes, single car effort for this event. I believe they'll have two cars. They'll have a new driver, Max Garcia, who will join the series starting in Sebring in a couple of weeks' time. Second, third, and fourth all over each other there with Sykes, Papasavas, and Hughes. And Nikita Johnson is the one who's liking to see that most because it's allowing him to open up a little bit bigger gap in the lead. Uh, we might have had a full course yellow there, but no, we did not. Drivers continue to battle. This is the fight here. And for Simon Sykes, he's worried about holding off the drivers here in the Jay Howard. Oh, and there's Lockie Hughes going to the inside of his teammate. Book it. Lockie Hughes to the inside of Papa Savas. So move Lockie Hughes into second. I think with about eight laps to go, Lockie's like, if I'm going to win this thing, i got to get by my teammate. I've given him all the opportunity to try to get by Simon Sykes. If you're not getting it done, i got to go to work. Also, as we're passing the halfway point now, we mentioned yesterday the fuel burns off a little bit on the cars, the normal degradation of the tires, the behavior of the car is a little bit different. Maybe at this point, Lockie Hughes is just simply faster than his teammate. It's like, give me a chance. Let's me, let me try to lead us up front. Let's throw a little bit of strategy at you as well. So uh, we had four sessions here, practice, qualifying, race, race. We had a carryover set of tires that we were allowed to use from the Sebring test on, on uh, Monday and Tuesday, the, uh, the spring training event. USF 2000 ran on Tuesday. They scuffed the set of tires in there. They were able to bring those. That was their practice tires. Only two sets of fresh Coopers for qualifying race race. Nikita Johnson, that team, VRD Racing, kept the set of sticker tires for today. He was holding on yesterday and was able to, uh, to get himself where he needed to be onto the podium, obviously. But today, fresh tires, they could be paying off for Nikita Johnson. He's got better rubber than anybody else. He's pulling away. And in fact, Simon Sykes has actually gapped himself a bit from the two Jay Howard drivers. That's also part of the learning process in the USF 2000 series is understanding how to manage your equipment. And that means how to manage the three sets of tires that you have. Do you deploy them early? Do you try and, yeah. and scuff in a set during the qualifying session so that you're ready for the race? That's or do you, do you leave them as stickers? And it seems to be paying off right now for Nikita Johnson. Normally in a longer qualifying session, you'll, you'll use one fresh set of tires. You'll use those in race one, use the second set in race two. But for Nikita Johnson putting a good lap down early, he was able to hold on to a set of stickers. They stayed on one tire for the entire time. This battle continues to be waged here between Hughes and Papa Savas. I love it. There's first, there's second, third, and fourth. Big gap back to the drivers running in fifth and sixth right now. That's Brienza and Garcias. Joey Brienza trying to bring it home. He's moved his way up to P5. What a good run for Joey Brienza. We do have a yellow, a local yellow. That's, I think, coming down into turn number 10. So potentially a driver's gone off in turn number 10. Being told that might be the 67 of Elliott Cox with no front wing. Not surprising. Probably got in there deep into the corner and pushed off. So Cox falling down the order. Douglas going up a spot now. Yeah, so Elliott Cox off the racetrack. Nine laps in the books. For him, we are working lap number 14. 13 laps down, seven to go for the drivers here in the USF 2000 Championship presented by Cooper Tires. All part of the USF Pro Championships, our newly rebranded program. You've, if you've been following it, this is what was formerly known as the Road to Indy. It's now USF Pro Championships, which includes USF Junior, USF 2000, and USF Pro 2000. 
I believe another good move there as well. I think, yeah, Garcia and Burke both got by Brianza as well. Brianza was up in the fifth position. He's lost a couple of spots. Jorge Garcia for D4 Racing is now up into the fifth spot. Trey Burke for Future Star Racing up into seventh. What a great uh, weekend it's been. It's sixth, pardon me. Fifth for Garcia, sixth for Burke. Brianza goes back into seventh. Danny Dazelski. Remember, Danny Dazelski started deep in the field. He started 20th. He's worked his way up now into eighth spot. What a great run for Danny. Terrific job to take advantage yeah. of the opportunities presented to him. We've seen a number of drivers have a little bit of contact. Some lose a front wing. Some have other, had mecha other mechanical issues. Danny Dazelski keeping his nose clean and picking them off one at a time, getting all the laps in in the race. Keeping your head uh, above you while well, everybody else is losing theirs, right? you got to stay focused. And again, you, if you just don't make the mistakes, you're going to move forward. I tell every one of these drivers that one of the championship contenders is going to have an issue in one of these two races. Make it not you, and you're going to get yourself into a good position coming out of this opening weekend of the season. Again, this is a long season, as we all know, folks. Lots of racing still to come for USF 2000. Sebring at the end of March. Of course, the month of May on the road course at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, the Oval at Indianapolis Raceway Park. And then we go to some iconic racetracks like Road America in Mid-Ohio, onto the streets of Toronto, and then wrapping it all up in Portland on Labor Day weekend. And Joey Brienza is into pit lane. An issue for Joey Brienza, who is running so strong at 1.P5. He'll bring that machine, the UBS-sponsored exclusive Autosport machine, down pit lane. It, it's been a tough day for exclusive Autosport, who has four gun, uh, four bullets in the gun, rather, and none of them able to deliver here today. D. Orlando now 14th, Gardner 15th, Douglas 16th, and we're going to see Brianza fall all the way down, too. He'll likely end up, when it's all said and done, in the 17th or 16th spot. So not a good day for the USF 2000 crew for exclusive Autosport. Leaders just crossing the line, and Simon Sykes has clawed into that lead just by a little bit oh, on yeah. Nikita Johnson, slicing a couple of tenths off. Lockie Hughes, Papa Savas, and Garcias rounding out the top five. The two teammates seem to have separated just a little bit in third and Great. fourth. Hughes and Papa Savas to see if that battle resumes. Uh, two battles I think we watch up front here right now is obviously Johnson and Sykes, and a little further back to Trey Burke trying to get into the top five. He's going to uh, start putting some pressure here on Jorge Garcia. This is third and fourth coming through. Fifth and sixth will come through a little further back. The gap is larger, but Trey Burke trying to see if he can't find a way by Jorge Garcia. Looking to get his best career result as well. Yesterday, uh, Garcia's finishing 13th. Could be a top five finish for the young Mexican for D-Force Racing. But he's got Trey Burke, the Texan, right behind him. 16 laps down. We'll put lap 17 in the books. And there is Simon Sykes hounding the young 14-year-old Nikita Johnson. Do we find ourselves with a late race battle. That's the lead coming through turn number 12. The big sweeping hairpin of turn, I guess the 13, I think we call it here. 14, I, I don't know what it is. It's a big sweeping 180 that the drivers have to wait, 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 wait before they roll back on the throttle. You get on it too early, the car gets that understeer. You got to wait perfectly, hit it, get the thing to rotate, and it's the big run down to turn number one. Huge jump by Simon Sykes on that last lap. Now just a little over four tenths wow. of a second between first and second. Nikita Johnson, the 14-year-old, going to start feeling the pressure in these closing laps. Down into turn number four. The gap now maybe two car lengths for Simon Sykes. Make that one as they come through five and six. There they are into seven and eight. Simon Sykes is right there. He knows he's got to win some races here if he wants to keep this seat at Paps Race. The budget is not there for the entire season. He wants to be able to run with this championship team, and he is putting the pressure right now on Nikita Johnson. It'll be two to go this next time by. Two laps remaining. Sykes all over him. There's the two J. Howard driver development drivers fighting as well. Lockie Hughes and Eva Garz Papasavas. Jay Howard has to be happy, not only with Hughes. He knows Hughes is going to be good. But out of the gate for Papasavas, wow. I've been so impressed with this young driver and what he's been able to do to be able to run like he has. The driver to Loveland, Ohio. Coming up through the carding ranks into now USF 2000. Did a partial schedule last year. Papasavas, very impressive. There's a pass further back. That's a pass to the lead, I think. Indeed, that may have been a pass of the lead. I think that Sykes gone going to the inside. There was a lap car in front, and he has made the move to the bottom. Book it for Simon Sykes. He goes to P1. Watching them come back through here again. 
There's the two drivers from Jay Howard, driver development. No, he does not. That, I think it's Nikita Johnson back out front. So they may have, they may have did the over-under coming through there. Wow, what action we're seeing here in USF 2000. A, a veteran driver like Simon Sykes going at this emerging star. Nikita Johnson is 14 years of age. Last lap coming. 18 in the books. Aaron Lycos will throw the white flag at start finish. Simon Sykes, I think, probably threw everything he had at him. Probably went a little deeper into the corner. And an over-under coming from Nikita Johnson. And that is a mature move to know that you're getting passed on the inside. If he goes deep on you, you got to just check up, do the over-under, you the beat him over to turn number two. Indeed, that was the case. Simon Sykes did what he could. And you got to give it to Simon. You got to throw it at him. You got, you got to give it a shot. Take a shot. And we have two battles going up front for first and second between Johnson and Sykes. And then the teammates, Hughes and Papasabas, also battling together just a couple of tenths apart. Uh, this won't be decided until we cross the finish line. Well, I guarantee you, Jay Howard's on the radio saying, boys, I know what you, you both want to be on the podium, but let's bring it home. We've had a great weekend so far. Let's not wreck it. Here's your leaders in a turn number four. Simon Sykes is probably going to have one more shot at maybe two, maybe 10, maybe 13. There's the two drivers battling for Jay Howard driver development. Leaders through turn number eight and nine now. Simon Sykes has closed back up a little bit, but not much. Papa Savas right there with Lockie Hughes as well. Leaders coming down. They do have a lap car in front of them. Simon Sykes, I don't know if he's going to be close enough. Will he box to the inside? Johnson coming into turn number 10. Into 10 and out of 10. No, that's actually the number 92 in front of them of Orlando. Sykes, not close enough. I don't think he's even close enough to make the dive into turn number 12 or 13 either. They'll work their way out of that combination. No. Wow, folks, what a run it's been and what a weekend as they work their way out of the front. Straight away, Nikita Johnson winning race two in USF 2000. The local driver, victorious. At the Grand Prix of St. Petersburg, he wins race number two of USF 2000 for VRD Racing. What a drive for Nikita Johnson. That's a name you're going to be hearing about for the next dozen or so years. Simon Sykes, a great drive. Two top five finishes for Simon Sykes. He's in a good place to continue a championship push. Lockie Hughes able to hold off his teammate, Ivagoras Papasavas, for the final position on the podium. Jorge Garcia, the same thing. He was able to hold back Trey Burke. What a great day for a great weekend for Trey Burke. The best we've seen out of him. Burke yesterday seventh. Today he comes home in the sixth spot. So a really good result for Future Star Racing as well. Danny Dazelski, we talked about him. Seventh. Stayed out of trouble. Ran strong. Ends up seventh for Danny Dazelski. Gordon Scully from, from 19th for Scully up into the eighth spot. Maxwell Jamison ninth in a top 10 for Al Morey Jr. It's the drivers at the tail of the field who stayed out of trouble. Look at the tail here, though, what we've got. Castro with an issue early with a mechanical. Clark with a mechanical. Same for Lucas St. Jean. Cox loses his wing. King gets into the side of his teammate. Brianza with a, a mechanical issue. Douglas loses a wing. Gardner loses a wing. And D. Orlando, the tail there of the lead lap. And Avery Towns, a good run for him as well. Avery Town finds himself up in 12th. Yeah, another driver that started near the back of the field had some issues uh, yesterday, but that 93 car uh, does, has a nice climb through the field. I wanted him to get 20 laps. That's what I wanted out of Avery. A full, a full run for him. Tremendous run. Hey, listen. We got two great winners already, Lockie Hughes and uh, and uh, Nikita Johnson. These are rookie drivers, as I expected to come out of the gate. Johnson, of course, a multi-time winner uh, in USF Juniors last year. He gets his first USF 2000 victory. I'm going to go join him over here at Victory Lane. What a great kickoff to the USF 2000 season here with two tremendous races on the streets of St. Petersburg. Don't forget, the USF Pro 2000 will wrap up our day later on this afternoon. Approximate time for the green flag is about 3 p.m. Yes, that is after... 3 p.m. Yes, that is after the NTT IndyCar Series race. One more event afterwards, and if uh, this morning is any indication, we'll have more great action following the NTT IndyCar Series this afternoon. Coming up shortly, the series, the NTT IndyCar Series will be on track for their morning warm-up. That's coming up at 9 o'clock this morning. There you see a happy youngster climbing out of his car with his first victory in the USF 2000 Series. That is Nikita Johnson to uh, ready to celebrate. And here's a look at the unofficial results once again. Nikita Johnson really challenged by Simon Sykes in that closing lap. Gave him all he could. Kind of passed him briefly, but then it was Nikita Johnson who managed to hold on and secure the victory. Lockie Hughes, yesterday's winner, comes up with another podium result. A terrific run through there. There's the celebration in pit lane. That is a happy crew. That is a happy driver. 
to celebrate that first victory here. The hometown driver as well, the local favorite. 14 years old. Let's resume a look at the results again. Chase Gardner and Jacob Douglas round out the top five. Joey Brienza, Zach Ping, Elliot Cox, Lucas St. Jean falling back, and Matt Clark also with the difficulties. We'll have victory podium celebrations coming up momentarily. The NTT IndyCar Series at the top of the hour with their 30-minute morning warm-up. Romain Grosjean scored the pole yesterday. We'll see what the drivers accomplished this morning in the morning warm-up. We'll take a quick break and then have podium celebrations for the USF 2000 Series. <laughs> It's your Uncle Cooper. Your SUV is a multi-purpose tool, like a corkscrew fish scaler. And that means your tires should be multi-purpose too. Like these Cooper rugged treks. They're tough, but also run smooth as butter. And with dual sidewalls, it's like having a multi-tool that can look like a completely different multi-tool. Don't take that idea, by the way. I'm gonna patent it. Go with the Coopers. Cooper. your Uncle Cooper. Sure, once in a blue moon, you might need your tires for hauling a horse in a hailstorm. But most days, you're going to need your tires for tougher things, like teaching your sister's kid how to parallel park. <sighs> Thankfully, these Cooper and Maxes aren't just tough. They're everyday tough. Okay, there's a lot of improvement. Go with the Coopers. Cooper! your Uncle Cooper. If you and your truck are constantly tackling the regular duties of the day, go with a tire that can handle them all. Oh man. I stepped in it. Go with the Coopers. USF Pro Championships, the world's greatest motorsports ladder program with a proven formula, where top junior drivers from around the world come to compete across the best tracks in North America, where the opportunity to climb to the top is guaranteed, promoting every champion to the next year, where champions are made and legends established. 52 races, over 50 up-and-coming drivers, and three scholarships valued at over $1.3 million. The USF Pro Championships, tomorrow's champions, forged today. It's your Uncle Cooper. Your SUV is a multi-purpose tool, like a corkscrew fish scaler. And that means your tires should be multi-purpose too. Like these Cooper rugged treks. They're tough, but also run smooth as butter. And with dual sidewalls, it's like having a multi-tool that can look like a completely different multi-tool. Don't take that idea, by the way. I'm gonna patent it. Go with the Coopers. Cooper!
it's your Uncle Cooper. Sure, once in a blue moon, you might need your tires for hauling a horse in a hailstorm. But most days, you're going to need your tires for tougher things, like teaching your sister's kid how to parallel park. Of St. Petersburg, our USF 2000 drivers putting on a show all the way through the field. A number of drivers starting deep in the field, able to stay out of trouble getting themselves forward, so kudos to them. But three drivers will bring up here. Very impressive throughout the day. Let's start with the driver winning yesterday, finishing third place today. Great weekend for the championship from Dre Howard. Driver development, put your hands together for Lockie Hughes. Third spot today for Lockie. Good battle with his teammate, Eva Goris Papasavas. Bringing up the third place trophy, one of our guests from Anderson Interior Contracting, Barb Swilly. Thank you, Barb. Third place trophy here for Lockie. A win yesterday. Good points hauls. We head to Sebring in about three weeks' time. This driver coming home in second found himself in the wall earlier in the weekend but fought back from 15th into the top five yesterday. A good run from pole today ends up in the second spot. Folks from Pabst Racing, a great run. Simon Sykes finishing second today. Present Simon with his second place trophy. Another one of our guests from Anderson Interior Contracting, Tony Swilly. Tony, thank you very much. Great job there for Simon. He took a shot at it at the end. Just couldn't quite hold the spot. Nonetheless, a great weekend for Simon as well. Most definitely in the championship battle here with two good results, even with the issues from earlier in the weekend. But always great that we have a driver come and get his first win in a program. And to do it here, essentially in his hometown, I literally had dinner last night in Gulfport. That's where the guy lives. He ends up winning 14 years of age. How about a round of applause for Nikita Johnson? <laughs> VRD racing driver. Nikita, first off, congratulations. You know, to come into a program like this as a rookie, when you can get that first early, it kind of sets the momentum, sets the confidence. How good did you feel going into the race today? I felt great. I mean, you know, we looked at data and video last night, made some changes on the car and my driving, and, uh, you know, I was a super confident coming in the race, and I knew I needed to get to the lead and control the race. Pretty good team call as well. You had an extra set of tires, I think, when you started the race. That obviously came into play late in the run. Yes, sir. What else do you want to say? Anybody else you want to thank? Yes, I want to thank all my friends and family for coming out, my dad, my mom, my little brother that's watching at home, um, all my sponsors, Walkers K, Allen Exploration, PSA Check, Tiger Precision Products, Any Desk, and uh, yeah, I mean, this VRD 17 machine was just super fast, and I was just very consistent, and that's what won. Get on top of the podium, my friend. First time here in USF 2000, Nikita Johnson. Big win to present him with his trophy from Cooper Tires, Matt Cooper. Help him out a P1 trophy. He's got one from USF Juniors last year. Now he's got one here in USF 2000. This is a name, folks, to remember. We do this all the time in this program. This is a name to remember uh, coming into the next couple of years as he works his way through this USF Pro Championships presented by Cooper Tires Ladder System. Three very talented drivers on the podium here today. Nikita Johnson with the win. Simon Sykes in second. Lockie Hughes. Coming home in third, this championship battle is going to be tight by the time we get to Portland, but lots of racing still to be done before we get to that. We've got some of our guests coming up here from Anderson Interior Contract. We'll get a little photo op. The drivers here are coming. And the guests having a fantastic weekend. It's been a beautiful day, obviously. Champagne, of course awaiting in the wings for the drivers here who have capped off their doubleheader weekend here at the Grand Prix of St. Petersburg. Lockie Hughes winning yesterday. Nikita Johnson capitalizing on that fresh set of tires. A great call for the VRD team to give him fresh boots. A little extra grip likely at the very end of the race day here today. Of course, able to hold off a determined Simon Sykes who is trying to get that win. Sebring's going to be fun to watch. Sykes was very quick there during... Uh, this, the spring training event we had just uh, last Tuesday for USF 2000. So we go back there in three weeks' time to Sebring, the week after the 12 hours. All three of the USF Pro Championships presented by Cooper Tires Series will be there. USF Juniors, USF 2000, and USF Pro 2000. Guys, have at it. Enjoy it. Celebration from a great day of competition here. Let her rip. Champagne flying here in victory lane. Nikita Johnson with the win.
the victory here in his home race at the Grand Prix of St. Petersburg. Simon Sykes, a strong run as well to second. Lockie Hughes backing up that win yesterday with a third place run. We have ourselves a bunch of championship contenders, folks. Lots more racing to come throughout the entire day. Don't go anywhere when we're done with the NTT IndyCar Series. Grand Prix of St. Petersburg, USF Pro 2000 will cap the day. More racing. Don't go into the traffic of uh, 275. Hang out, have another cold beer, and enjoy yourself here after the race. Good morning, race fans. Welcome to Sunday here at the Grand Prix of St.